Okay, let's see how quickly we can do this. Who left rubbish in my room? A rubbish can is right there. Let the old guy reach down and get stuff. <sighs> Beat the tall guy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do every single problem. So if you didn't get it, you must have write it down. Or you're just gonna watch the video. Yeah, but then what if there's technical problems? What if what if something happened and there is no video? What if electricity goes out in the whole world? for the next four days or whatever. So we have school. We have school with no electricity. Just without water, we can't have school. Yeah, but something like super bad must happen. It's just like throughout the whole world. Yeah, but we still gonna learn math. No matter what. We have generators. Generate for the whole school. So y equal negative 2. Look, and I, like I told you, look, I factored out the 3 for you. Because I don't want to have people factoring out the 3 wrong and then it's just all messed up. Okay, so what graph should I draw first? What's the first graph I should draw? Uh, cosine graph. This one. Graph this first, right? Don't pay attention to, remember, you got to do the stretching and shrinking first. You do this part first, and then you shift it pi over 6 to the right and one uh, okay so just just do that first and then do the, sh the, the shifting after okay now how do I now I'm only gonna graph one period you guys gotta learn to copy and paste okay so you can. okay so cosine looks like this uh, two, two, two. one I'm getting one cosine looks like this but then that's negative cosine so it's gonna go the opposite way like that, okay? What does that do to the graph? It multiplies the y coordinates by two. This will multiply the x coordinates by <coughs> one third, the reciprocal of that one. So if you multiply that by one third, that's two pi over three, which means this is pi over three, and then half of that is pi over six. Each hash mark is pi over six. One pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six. Now, I'm not requiring you to do that, but I'm gonna tell you, it's. It, it, you know, when I ask the later questions, it's going to be better if you do that. Okay? So now, this is the graph right here. Right here. This is the graph. So now you shift it pi over 6 to the right. See, which is one hash mark. See how I make mine come out nice? And one up. So I guess we should do this, yeah? So everything should have to go one up. I guess we'll do the right. Okay, so this point will go pi over 6 to the right, one hash mark to the right, and one up. <coughs> Except that's not the point, it's this one, fool. This is the point. So this point goes one pi over 6 to the right, and one up. So there. This point, pi over 6 to the right, one up. This point, pi over 6 to the right, one up. And then where's the point? Here. Pi over 6 to the right, I guess we need another hash mark there. Oh, and that's another thing. You know when you make your x-axis on the quiz, some people are doing this. It's like one, two, three, four. No! Bad dog! Look, once you establish this as one, then every hash mark should be like the same length, right? It should be one unit. You cannot make, okay, this is one, and then that's one. You know what I mean? Because they're different lengths. You, you have to keep it consistent. Okay, anyway, I forgot what I was doing. Go oh, here. So here's the point, you go pi over 6 to the right, and 1 up, and then you connect the dots. Where's the point over here? Did I miss one point? Yeah. Oh, I missed this one. Pi over 6 to the right, 1 up. <coughs> I wonder, where is it? And there you go. That's one period, and then you just copy and paste. So <laughs> out of the 32 people who took the quiz, 31 pasted on this side. We had one person pasted on that side. But it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. A pick either. If B, Y equal 3 sine pi over 2 x plus 1 minus 2. Okay, so what graph should I draw? 
Yeah, just look look at this right there. Look at that. And then you just shift it one left and two down left. So worry about that first. So this is like yesterday's quiz. You start with the base grab. Look, everything. I've done it so many times. It's good. Okay, like that. Okay, so what does this do to the graph? It multiplies the y's by 3, and that multiplies the x's by 2 over pi. Two over pi. So if you multiply this by 2 over pi, the pi's cancel out, and you get 4. four three, two, one. So 4, 2, 1, 3. Then. This is going to be nice. So now, you shifted 1 left and 2 down. So everything got to go, so 1, 2, 3. So 1 left, 2 down. So, every, so this point, 1 left, 2 down. Just work with the key points. These are the key points right here, people. Right? Yeah. So 1 left, 2 down. 1 left, 2 down. 1 left, 2 down. Uh, this point. 1 left, 2 down. I guess we're going to go down here. 1 left, 2 down. And then this point. 1 left, 2 down. Okay, and here we go. There you go. And then copy and paste. I don't care which way you can do it. Let's see, are we getting the hang of it? Sure. You guys gotta do it on your own. You just watch me do it and they copy what you do. Okay, here we go. Why? Negative tangent 2x minus 5 over 4. Okay, so what graph <coughs> should I draw? This, right? So all you have to do is graph that and then shift it pi over 4 to the right. I'm not going to even make you go up and down. I think on the test, only these two are going to make you go up or down. Okay, so some of you still are shaky on the base graphs. Remember, tangent is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. <laughs> How can I remember that, Mr. Park? Well, isn't tangent sine over cosine? Right? Yes. And then how do you figure out where you have vertical asymptotes when the denominator is 0? So when is cosine equal to 0? <laughs> pi over 2, right? Isn't cosine of pi over 2 0? So that's why the asymptote is power. See, if you can just remember one asymptote, then you, you can probably get the whole graph. Where cotangent, cotangent is cosine over sine. What will make the denominator zero? Sine of what will give you zero? Zero and pi, right? So that's why for cotangent, the asymptotes are zero and pi, but for tangent, it's negative pi over two and pi over two. But you gotta figure out some way to remember it, yeah? And then tangent, of course, goes up, but this is a negative tangent graph, so when you reflect it over the x-axis, it's like that. So there you go. Oh, we're not done yet. And then this, okay, we did that already. Now, if you want to put the 1 and the negative 1 there, you can, but in this problem, it doesn't matter. And then what does that do to the graph? Multiply the x's by 1 half. So if I multiply by half, that's pi over 4. So this is pi over 4, and this is negative pi over 4. So now that I got this graph, you just shift everything pi over 4 to the right. So pi over 4, notice, is just one hash mark. So everything goes one hash mark to the right. So if this asymptote will go here now. This asymptote goes here now. So this is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what we got so far, and then everything goes there you go. That's one period. And copy, paste, or copy and paste, whatever, whichever way you want to go. See how I make mine come out nice? I like the books one. Books one is ugly. Okay, D. D, why are you going to get this to cotangent? That's cotangent. <laughs> Pi over 4, x plus 1. Okay, so cotangent, like we just talked about, the asymptotes are at zero and pi. Like that. And cotangent goes up, but this is negative, so it goes down like this. And then you have one and negative one. 
Okay, that multiplies the x's by 2. I mean the y's by 2, sorry. This will multiply the x's by... This one. 4 over pi. 4 over pi. And the pi's cancel out, so that's just 4! And of course that means that's 2. And then if you want to put in more, you can. I guess we need to because look, that's going to shift the graph 1 to the left, so I guess you should put those in. So everything will go one hash mark to the left, so here's negative 1. Then. So this asymptote here goes 1 to the left, this asymptote goes 1 to the left, and then this point here goes 1 to the left, and then here we go, baby. And then copy and paste. So if you want to put one, two, three, four, I guess that would be good. Okay. The what? Oh, I forgot. Ah, lose money. You're right. I forgot to reflect it. Minus two. Okay, 98 is a darn good score on this test. So if you reflect it, it goes upward. All right, E. <clears throat> See, when you take a test, you're bound to make mistakes, right? But you can handle the minus twos, the minus ones, and even the minus threes. Here. But the fatal errors, minus five, minus six, that's the kind of that's the one that kills your score. Okay, secant and cosecant. See, one of each one. Y equals three secant pi over 6, x minus 2. Okay, so what should I graph? This, right? This is what you graph. Mm -hmm. And then just shift it to, to the right after. Okay, so just worry about that right there. Okay, so the first thing is draw the base graph like this. Okay, so if I'm going to graph secant, you graph cosine first. So cosine. The secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And then again, wherever it touches the x-axis, vertical asymptote, and then you hump up and down. So let me just go. That multiplies the y's by 3. This will multiply the x's by 6 over pi. So if I times this by 6 over pi, the pi's cancel out and you get 12, which means this is 6, this is 3, and that's 9. Oh, I gotta shift it too. Oh, more money. That's okay. Just gotta go like this. Okay, so I just need to shift everything two to the right. So you know what I would do first? I would do the asymptotes first. So this asymptote goes two to the right. So here. You know what? I, this is getting too busy. This picture. I need a different color. Where's the blue chalk? It's on the ground. <laughs> so this asymptote goes 2 to the right, this asymptote goes 2 to the right, everything goes 2 to the right. I guess that would be the thing. Okay, so, so what else? This point goes 2 to the right, and then you like this. This point here goes 2 to the right, so it's going to be like this. And then this point goes 2 to the right. There you go. And then copy and paste. But see how consistent? See, every hash mark should be the same length. Okay, F. So, you're going to have plenty of time on the test. Just take your time. You only got to do 14 problems. You got one hour. So, graph this first. This is what you graph. And then you shift it pi over 4 to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1. Oh, now this is cosecant, so I graph sine to start off with. And then I hump it. 
Uh, oh, this is negative too, so it's humping up and then it's humping down, but then you gotta reflect it over the x-axis, so we should have done the negative sign one first, but whatever. So there it is, and there it is. So it's, so it's these now, it's these two, because it's negative. Okay, that multiplies the y-coordinates by two, that's always the easy part. This will multiply the x-coordinates by one fourth, so if I multiply that by one fourth, what do you get? Pi over 2. So this is pi over 2, which means this is pi over 4, and that's pi over 8, and that's 3 pi over 8. So if I'm going to shift the graph pi over 4 to the left, see, pi over 4 is two hash marks. You have to shift everything two hash marks to the left. So, so here we go. So this asymptote goes two hash marks to the left, which will be here. This asymptote goes here. This asymptote goes here. Okay, which one is the one? It was this one, yeah? So this hump comes here. So this point, I guess you can think of that point, that comes there, and then you got this. And then, okay, which one is it? Oh, it's this one. So this point goes here, and then, there you go. It's the blue one. And then copy and paste. All right, now that, that's the graphs. Now, so what did I say, five points each problem? Yes. And then I'm giving you how many points? 30 or something. Oh, Wayne. 30? Strike two. <laughs> okay, so now, each, so 14 times five, I forgot what they said, 70, 33 points I'm gonna give you, right? 33? 30, 30. Okay, let's finish this thing. Okay, now the graph shows, now I don't want to draw this graph again, I'm just gonna, we're gonna go through it. So, the cosine function, this is not one, this is number two. Okay, so this is what you should do. Y equal A cosine B X minus C plus D, right? Yes. This has everything in it. All you gotta do is like fill in each one Probably going to be one or one point for each one, unless it's not. Okay. So look at this graph. Can you tell that this graph is shifted up or down? It's shifted up, right? Because look, normally cosine and sine oscillates about the x-axis, but look, it's not. Because look, that's two and that's four. It's not the same length. So how how much up did this thing get shifted? One. It got shifted up one, right? Because see how it's oscillating about this line instead. So you know it's up one. So if that's the only thing you can do, just do that and go ahead, I got one point. But see, that's the, you want to do more than that. Okay, what else can I figure out? The amplitude. Okay, if it's oscillating about this line, then isn't that the amplitude then? The distance from the, 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 the line to the max or the min point? Mm -hmm. So what's that distance? Oh, the amplitude's three. <coughs> So you can do three. Now the most important part of the graph is the period. So I'm, probably this, this one here is going to be worth two points and the other ones are going to be one point. Okay, now how do I figure out the period, Mr. Park? Well, there's lots of ways to do it. How about find distance from here to there? See? From that max point to that max point. Isn't that one period? And you go from max to max. Or you can go min to min. Or min to min. min, min. Whatever. Just pick one. How about max to max then? How far is it from negative four to four? I mean, if you really need to count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you have to count, but come on. Like here. How far is it from two to five without doing anything? Three, just subtract. Five minus two. Big minus small. So how far is it from negative four to four here? How far is it from negative four to four? This minus this, eight. So we know the period is eight, so what do we do? How do you tell the period of a cosine function? Mm -hmm. Two pi over b, that's the period, gotta equal eight. So if you cross multiply this critter, you get eight b is equal to two pi, divide both sides by eight, Whew! two goes into four, eight, four times. <coughs> so what is b? Mm -hmm. Pi over four, there's two points right there. ka -ching! You know what I'm thinking? I should make this problem worth six points. 
No, I won't. Okay, pi over 4. Everybody can do that then? So which, what's easier, graphing it on your own or writing the equation? Now, how much is the graph shifted? Now, there's two things you can do here. Doesn't cosine here? Oh, gosh, back <coughs> Look, one, two, three, four. Now, normally a cosine graph looks like this, right? Doesn't a cosine graph start at the maximum right there? So, what, where do you want to think of the starting point? You want to think of it as here or there? Huh? I don't know. Okay, how about answering the question? <laughs> okay, let's do this one then. Okay, if the cosine graph... Get back here. If the graph starts up here, then how much did it get shifted? It got shifted four to the left, right? But then you can also say, yeah, but what if I started over there? Then I got to shift it forward to the right. And it doesn't matter. See, that's the thing. It doesn't matter because the period is eight. So if you thought of it as shifting it forward to the left, then you would do this, right? If you think about it as shifting forward to the right, then you know that. And both of them would be correct. Demelo. What if you made it negative? There you go. And that's another one. What if I did a negative cosine graph, Mr. Park? Because a negative cosine graph, one, two, three, four, doesn't it look like this? Starts down here. So if you think of it as a negative cosine graph, then it would start right there, then you don't have to shift it at all. So if you made this negative, then it would be like minus zero then. So there's an infinite number of ways you can write the answer, right? Because think about it. Oh, then Mr. Park, instead of shifting it four to the right, what if I shifted 12 to the right? Or 12 to the left? That would be correct too. So. There's an infinite number of ways of writing the answer. Just find one of them, and you, know, you get full credit. OK, the next one, now it says write a sine function. Exactly the same graph, but now you can do a sine function. So y equal a sine b x minus c plus d. Now, is the graph still shifted up one unit? No. Look at that graph. Is it still up one? Yeah. So if that one is plus 1, this one will be plus 1. And is the amplitude still 3? No, this is 3. Is the period still 8? Yes. Yeah, so this number is still pi over 4. See, so whatever you have there, you just put here. The only difference is now it's just shifted a different amount. Now, sine. Sine looks like this. Wait, doesn't it start here? Then it goes up, a positive sine path. So where does it? Remember, it's oscillating about this line right here. So you can think of it, oh, it's starting here. See how it's going? Oh, get back here. Start there, and it's going up like that. Or you can think of it, oh, it starts here, and then it goes up. So what do you want to do? You want to move it 6 to the left, or would you want to go 2 to the right? It's up to you. So you can, over here, you can shift it 2 to the right, or you can shift it 6 to the left. Both of those are correct, or we can do the DeMello method. What if it's a negative sine graph? Negative sine graph goes like this, right? Negative sine graph. So where would that be? No, that would be right here. See, it starts there, and it goes down. So if, it, if you're going to start there instead of at the origin, right over here, you got to shift it 2 to the left. So how do I make the graph go two to the left? Add yeah, maybe we do that. So, so those are like that would be the three most common answers. But I'll take any of them. Just pick one and go with. It. Okay, C. Let's move on. How early we're gonna finish? Tangent. Okay, so there's the graph. Now notice that the the tangent cotangent. Only the sine and cosine ones I'm shifting up or down. The others, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna even bother with that. So for these, you just have to do this. You just have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about shifting up or down. Okay. So the first thing, what do you want to look for? <coughs> it's negative. It's a negative tangent graph. I mean, wait, we're not doing secant. We're doing tangent. 
Okay, somebody said negative. Okay, yeah, and it is negative. And then what, what, what is it? Negative one, negative two, negative three. How do you tell? Okay, first of all, let's figure out the period, I think. How, how do you figure out the period? Mr. Park, I usually, I, look, I usually look at the asymptotes. I don't see the asymptotes. That's because when you graph it on a calculator, the graphing calculator is not going to show you the asymptotes. It's going to show you the graph. So to find the period, just look at this. Here's the x-intercept there. There's the x-intercept there. Why don't I just find the distance between the two x-intercepts, right? Because it just repeats itself, right? So what is the period? Well, no, no. How far is it from 0 to 4? Okay, thank you. It's 4. How do we get 2? So the period is 4. Now, what is the period for tangent and a cotangent function? Pi over b. For sine and cosine, it's 2 pi over b. But for tangent and cotangent, it's pi over b. So pi over b got to equal 4, which is 4 over 1. Cross multiply, divide by 4. B is pi over 4. You just got yourself two points. Okay, now what about the... Which means the asymptotes are here and here, yeah? Right, because the asymptotes got to be halfway in between, right? Like that. So even though the graph is not showing it, one asymptote is at negative x equal negative 2 and the other one is at x equal 2. Okay, now, how do I figure out what the thing is? Is it 1 or is it 2? What is A, 1, 2, or 3? Look at the thing. Okay, I'll tell you what the correct number is and then you tell me why. It's 2. What? Because look, here, let's graph tangent. One, two. Okay, this is how tangent looks. See, at pi over 4, it's 1 and negative 1. So right here, it's 1, and then it goes like this, and that's negative. That's what it looks like. So halfway between the x-intercept and the asymptotes, you look at that, see, the y-coordinate is 1. And so if you have to multiply, so here, look. Here's the asymptote, right? And here's the x-intercept. Halfway in between, look, right here. Hey, come back here. Anyway, here's the asymptote, here's the x-intercept. Halfway in between, no, it goes up to 2. That's why it's 2. Anyway, if you miss that, minus 1 or 2, that's not going to hurt you that badly, right? And then, how much did I have to shift? Huh. Yeah, you don't have to shift anything. That's that's tangent graph right there, right? Because, no, look, normally, wouldn't this be pi over 2, and, I mean, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? But what does that do to the graph? It multiplies it by 4 over pi, cancel, cancel. That's 2. It's 2 already. So th there's no shifting left to right. So, so this, this would be 0, I guess. There you go. OK, and then oh, now we've got to do cotangent. y equal a cotangent b x minus c. Okay, let me ask you this. If the period of the tangent one is pi over four, I mean, is, is, if b is pi over four, is that this b going to also be pi over four? Yes. Yes, because for cotangent and tangent, they're both pi over b, so that doesn't change. And then what about this number? Is it still going to be two? Yes. Yeah, that, see, that, that number doesn't change. And is this a positive or a negative cotangent graph? Positive. It's a positive, okay now. How do I figure out how much it shifted? Well, you got to know your base graph. Cotangent is like this. This is cotangent, like that. This multiplies the x coordinates by 4 over pi, which means this is 4 and this is 2. So look at that graph right there. How much do I have to shift it either left or right to get that graph right there? 2. 2 which way? Left or right. Yeah, left or right. Because look, look at this point right here. Look at this point. Look at that point. See how it's here? Mm -hmm. So look at that point there. It's at 2, but then over here it's at 0, so you've got to shift it to left. Or if you shift it 2 to the right, it would be there. So you can either go left or right. It doesn't matter. So you can put either x plus 2 or x minus 2. 
In fact, if you want to, can I go x plus 6, x minus 6? Yes. Yeah, you can do 6 too if you want it, but why don't we just stick with 2, it's easier. All right. And then, the secant and cosecant. Okay, there's the humping. And again, there's no, I'm not, there's no up and down shift. The only up and down shift I'm going to give you is with sine and cosine. So you don't even have to worry about that. Okay, so here we go. So this is what number four in y equal a secant bx minus c. Okay, let's let's figure out the period first. Is that that's the key? And again, how do you figure out the period? Well, look at here. I mean, you can look at lots of things. What about the distance between that and that right there? What is the x coordinate here? Halfway in between. One point five. One and a half. What about there? Seven and a half. So. How far is it from one and a half to seven and a half? Six. six. So we know the period is six. So two pi over b gotta equal six. This might be the easiest thing to figure out. Cross multiply, six b equals two pi, divide by six. Woo! B equals pi over three. Da da da. Now what about a, the amplitude? Well, there's no amplitude on a secant function, but remember. When you graph the cosine one, and then you hump up, and down, hump up, right? This thing over there tells you the amplitude, right? Well, look at that thing. It's like 2.5. Yeah, it's 2.5, because look, the y coordinate there is 2.5. So this is 2.5. So you're just building up points. Now, all you have to do is figure out how much do I have to shift it. That might, I don't know, maybe that's the hardest thing. So when in doubt, go back to your base graph. So cosine looks like this, and then you hump the graph. So it looks like that, like that, and like that, right? And what does that do? That multiplies it by 3 over pi. So that's going to be 6, 3, a 1 and a half, 4 and a half. OK, now look at this graph. What, how, how do I shift it to get that graph right there? It's moving to the left or right one. Because just look at it. What do I have to do to this graph to get that one there? You have to shift it somehow. Well, first of all, look at the asymptotes. The, zero, the asymptotes over here are 0, 3, and 6. But over here, it says 1.5, 4.5. So what? No, not up. How much do I shift it? Up. No, we're not just shifting up. It's either left or right. 1.5, are you sure? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No, because if you shift everything to the left 1.5, then you're going to have a hump down here, but the hump is up here. OK, you know what? Maybe we need this one over here, negative 1.5. Maybe we need down there. Look. See, we, to the right of the y-axis, you need a hump on the top. So this thing got to go right. Everything got to be shifted 1.5 to the right. So that's 1.5. Wait, is this too difficult? OK, and then finally, this is cosecant graph. So if you did all the legwork over there, then you, you look. So if that's pi over 3, that's pi over 3, because the period is the same. If that's 2.5, this is 2.5. That's not going to change. OK? Now, how does cosecant look, Mr. Park? OK, we're going to do positive cosecant. If you want to do negative cosecant, you can do it. But we'll just keep it simple. What does cosecant look like? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, negative 1. So here's the sine graph. And then you hump it. And again, this multiplies it by 3 over pi. So this is 3. Wait. I'm not looking at it. 3 over pi. That's 6. Got to be careful here. 3, 1.5, 4.5. OK, look at this graph. How much do I have to shift it left or right to get that? You don't have to shift it at all. That's, that's the graph right there. So then this would be 0 then. Shifted it off. So that's good. All right, let's last two problems and we're done.
Okay, find the domain and range of the, oh gosh, I can't get them both. Now, to find the domain and range, basically, you draw the graph, that's what you do. And that's the question, okay, let's do this quickly. Number five, y equal two cos, cos secant, pi over six, x plus five, plus three. Okay, so, again, you graph this, and after you finish that, then you shifted five left and three up, okay? So let's draw the base graph first. Boop, 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 boop. One, negative one, sine looks like this. And you hope it. So it's like this. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll do it this way. Bring out the color chalk. Okay, what does that do to the graph? It multiplies it by two, the y coordinates. What does that do? It multiplies the x coordinates by six over pi, which would be twelve. So this is twelve, six, three, and nine. That's that's going to be key right there. And then now shift everything. 5 left and 3 up. Now, some of you can see what's happening already, then you, you don't really need to do it. So, but. Okay, shift everything 5 left, and we're going to need another one now. 6. Okay, so this asymptote gets shifted 5 to the left, this is over here, and 3 up, but that's not going to affect it. This asymptote gets shifted 5 to the left. This asymptote gets shifted 5 to the left. Okay, and then the graph goes 3 up. So, what? <clears throat> so instead of 2, you got to go 3 up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be up here at 5. So it's going to be like this right here. Halfway in between. Wow! And then same thing here. So this point got to go 5 left and 3 up. So if you're at negative 2, yikes, you go 3 up, you're going to be over here. So it's going to look like this. Ah, that's not the middle. This is the middle. So that's what the graph looks like. Okay, so what's the domain? The domain can be anything except where you have a vertical asymptote. So this is how you write it. X can be any number, or well, X cannot be what? What are the numbers that X cannot be? Wherever you have a vertical asymptote. So where do you have one? Negative 5. Negative 5. 1. 1. And 7. And you know what? Then just go dot, 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 dot. And that's good enough. I'll give you full credit on that. Later on, we're going to learn a mathematical way of writing. Now, what about the range? Well, what is the y coordinate right there? 5. And then everything above it. So wouldn't it be y greater than or equal to 5? Yes. And then what's the y coordinate right here? 1, and then everything below it. So it will be y is less than or equal to 1, and then put an or in between. Boom! There you go. That's the domain in the range. Now, some of you can just see it like, okay, I got the asymptotes at, look, I'm trying to teach you a shortcut here. The asymptotes are at 0, 6, and 12. If I shifted it 5 to the right, wouldn't it be... You can just do it in your head. Subtract 5. Negative 5, 1, and 7, right? You don't even have to draw it. You just do it, figure it out. And then, normally, look, the y coordinate over here is 2, and that's negative 2. What if it got shifted up 3? Then it would be 5, and negative, I mean, 5 and 1. And that's why, that's how you get these numbers right here. So you don't have to draw the whole graph, but it, it just makes it simple. Okay, last one, and we're done. Number six, find all the asymptotes. So again, if you just draw the graph, you can answer the question. So again, everything is going to come down to can you graph, because that's what this test is all about, graphing. Okay, so first you graph this, right? And then you just shift it one to the right. So what, do, what does cotangent look like? Ah, it looks like this. Okay, what would that do? That multiplies the x by 6 over 5. So one times this by 6 over 5, you get 6, which means that's 3. Okay, so I'm asking you, where are the asymptotes? Now, if you want another period, then you do this. Here's two periods. Over here. So where are the asymptotes right now? x equals 0, 6, 
12, and so forth, right? But we have to shift everything one to the right. So if each of these numbers gets shifted one to the right, wh where's it going to be? 1, 7, one, seven and 13. And that's right. And don't forget to put dot, 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 dot. Because there's an infinite number of these, right? So there's your answer. Hey, Mr. Park, those are kind of easy, those two. Yeah, well, then. OK. So again, I will repeat. I, I'm not seeing you till Wednesday. <laughs> So do this practice test on your own sometime. Probably Tuesday is the best day and then come in for help if you need it.